nice and strong. Mmm, nothing like a good cup of tea. Yeah. Made by that kettle, which is powered by electricity. Electricity, the most important energy breakthrough in history and the centre of all our needs in terms of domestic consumption. Question is though, of course, electricity has to be generated. It, has to be, it comes from somewhere. I think it will always need electricity, but where does it come from? It doesn't. Electricity is not our energy source as such. It's not a fuel. It is actually a, a means of delivering energy, really, from fuel. For instance, the electric, the fuel, the the energy itself comes from a power station or from a generator, various types. That generates the electricity, which then is sent here to this plug along the long lines of wires of the national grid to, to heat up that kettle so I can have my nice steaming hot cup of tea. Water. How many joules does it take to raise water from room temperature to boiling point? Got me thinking, you know, because um, Martin Fleischmann has just died. Um, now you may not have heard of that name, but um, check it, Google it, and you'll get loads and loads of loads and loads of um, sort of references, lots of pages about him. Um, and he's actually very much connected with the issue to do with energy. Now he was um, he was born in 1927 in what is now the Czech Republic, and in 1938 he moved to England. And he um, took, got a job at the University of Newcastle teaching chemistry. And he was a chemist all his life, specialising in electrochemistry. Now, um, in 1989, he hit the news headlines along with his colleague Stanley Pons. Not just the scientific headlines, but the, the mainstream national press and the BBC news headlines. Because... Um, he came out with an announcement that he and Pons had managed to produce nuclear fusion at room temperature. It caused a media storm. Absolute furore. Everywhere. Now, nuclear fusion, what is it? Well, basically, it's, it's a process by which the atomic nuclei, at the, set, the heart of the atom, fuse together. Hence the name, and they become one. You get um, what happens when that happens. They create a new atom, a new element, which is different from the two original atoms. And in doing so, they release a vast amount of energy. Um, you know, in line with um, Einstein's equation of E equals m c squared, which is a huge amount of energy. Now, um, it's very different from nuclear fission because I mean, people often get those mixed up. Which nuclear fission is a tried and tested method and has been for for many many um, years now, over a hundred years whereby you split an atom and um, and, in, and um, that produces energy too and that's how nuclear power stations work, it's how um, uh, nuclear reactors that produce power for submarines work, it's how nuclear bombs work that way as well. And of course um, the dangers of that is it produces these highly toxic byproducts, you know, which need to be buried in canisters a hundred feet underground for ten million years uh, and they you know, and it produces this ionising radiation which causes terrible damage like at places like Fukushima. Um, so it's dirty, it's dangerous, it has a lot of problems nuclear fission. Fusion doesn't have that. You don't get these byproducts. You don't get this ionising radiation, at least not as serious. And it produces even more energy. It produces about, I think it's ten times as much energy as fission. Now, there are fusion reactors but they're experimental. Um, now, nuclear fusion happens naturally in, in, in stars, at very, very high temperatures and very, very high pressure, millions of degrees. And of course, there's nowhere on Earth like that, naturally, so they have to create artificial um, locations like that. And they do it in these tanks called tokamaks, 
and there's um, and one of the principal the world's principal research laboratories for that kind of technology is is just a few miles from where I'm sitting right now at Cullum in Oxfordshire. Um, this this tokamak is a huge circuit. It's sort of like ring-shaped tank, this torus of magnets with this gas in the middle which is heated to about 15 million degrees and just for just a brief fraction of a second you get a little bit of energy out of it just a few kilowatts, that's all they've managed to produce after many many decades of research it's um... yeah the fusion project has made very slow progress and it's a bit of a technological cul-de-sac I think and maybe that's deliberate and if you watch my film Frycraft, link in the description box as always, I, I explain in more detail why I think that is, why I think it is deliberate. Um, it's also impractical because, I mean, with those sort of temperatures, what kind of heat exchanger can you use? Things like that, you know, you can't exactly, you can't exactly put a reactor like that in a, um, a submarine, you know, or um, in, a, in a place where you can be used. But cold fusion is different. Like the cold fusion that was renounced in 1989 happens at room temperature, and it doesn't it doesn't need these great pressures and temperatures that you get in the in research, in places like Cullum. It happens almost effortlessly. Now I mean I've you know if you look at it I mean I've looked at the I've read some of the pages. Now I'm not a geek. I'm not a science expert. I'm not a professor. You know, but to me, the apparatus and method doesn't look all that complicated. All right? There's no large hadron collider required it looks it's actually not it's not dissimilar from schoolboy science i mean um the actual the, the actual the, the actual effect was discovered accidentally um during an experiment with electrolysis and i mean electrolysis is the kind of thing you do in your science class at school i did it too you just you know you get these little beakers of water and you put little rods in and attach them to wires and batteries and magnets and things and you know that's that's electrolysis now um what Pons and Fleischmann did is they put a rod of palladium, which is a kind of metal, into a beaker of, of deuterium, which is a very, very common isotope of hydrogen, which is, one of the, which is the most co common element in the universe, the most common element on Earth. And um, they ran an electric current through it. And they were expecting to see some kind of chemical reaction, but instead they got this massive amount of heat. I thought, where's this heat coming from? And um, amazingly, right, I mean, they weren't the first ones to come up with this. I didn't know this, right, but, but this experiment has been done many, many times over, over the decades, and it was first observed in 1926. With Pons and Fleischmann, that was the first time it got into the media, and it was, it was looked at by the news. Now, um, this heat is coming from somewhere. Now, Pons and Fleischmann said this must be nuclear fusion. It's the only thing they could think of that could produce this kind of heat. And they rigged, the, they rigged their apparatus up to neutron detectors and things like that, and they detected neutron emissions and other byproducts that look, made it look like this was nuclear fusion. Now, what happened was, um, the, the experiment, there was, there was big news, news, newsmen descended on every laboratory in the world, and all these guys were trying to, all these scientists all around the world were trying to repeat the experiment to see if they could, re, they could actually get the same thing. So if they can do that, then they know it works. Um, now, at first it said, oh, yeah, we've done it, we've repeated it. And then others came around saying, no, no, it's not. And then it was a very, very confusing period of a few days, which is very reminiscent of the Roswell Daily Record, you know, emptying the Roswell saucer. It's just a weather balloon. That's what happened this time. And um, Pons and Fleischmann were disgraced. Martin Fleischmann, who died last month, was made a pariah, treated very, you know, as a, a scientific embarrassment. Now, um, you see, if cold fusion works, or not even cold fusion, because nowadays they, cause it, it's not proved that nuclear fusion is actually taking place. In a way, it doesn't matter, right? It's kind of academic whether nuclear fusion is actually taking place. What is important is that you're getting extra heat, and that's why they call it now the anomalous heat effect. Because the moment you get extra heat, you don't, you can, you can rig it up to a heat exchanger, run it through a boiler, the boiler can spin a turbine and a dynamo, and you can start using it in a power station or in your car or in your home. You can work out exactly what's causing the anomalous heat later. For practical purposes, all that it matters is the heat is being produced. So why don't we get cold fusion power stations everywhere? Why is it, see? This is strange. I mean, what it means is, you see, because if 
cold fusion, if this or this anomalous heat effect is real, there's enough, it means all the Earth's energy problems are solved for the next million years. There's enough deuterium on Earth to, to run every power station for a million years. And you don't have to dig it out of mines. Deuterium is extremely common. In fact, it's in water. Just plain water. Billions and billions of atoms just in that water that I just ran there. The amount of water I just run would run this house for a week. So that's a question, you see. I see, I've often said this before, and I mean, there is a free energy cover up. Every, so every few years, right, but this interesting cold fusion is reignited. And it's just been reignited because the University of Missouri is now running a project carrying on the work of Martin Fleischmann and Stanley Pons. They're going to do a new experiment on the cold fusion, try and get it to work. There's a company called National Instruments in America, which is, which is sort of like he's like running this. And there's a guy called Dr. Robert Duncan. And I've written to Robert Duncan and I've asked him if he'd be interested, on, if he'd be interested in being interviewed on her Panmo radio, my radio station. Um, I'm going to be watching this very carefully because every other time that this development starts, something goes wrong. Funding dries up, um, the, the scientists are reassigned, sp you know, sponsorship deals break down, um, you get things like um, you know, uh, patents and rights and development licenses get sold and resold and lent and borrowed and lost, and things like that. It's <coughs> Um, so it's important from a Hapano-esque point of view. It's very important to keep an eye on these projects because something. If 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 um, you know, according to what my experience in the past, if it's happened in the past, it's going to happen again. Something's going to go wrong with this project as well. Now, um, this is of course the 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 reason why there's this cover-up, why the use of fossil fuels, the forcing of Forcing people to use fossil fuels and nothing else is inimical to the New World Order and to maintaining Illuminati rule of this planet. And in the, in the film Frycraft, I describe that in more detail. So if you go to that, um, I'll, you'll, I'll explain everything in that. Um, of course, this is also linked to the UFO cover-up and Roswell, you know, like I was just saying about the Roswell Daily Record. Um, as I said... Um, We'll see what happens, but um, I'm hoping to get Dr. Duncan to come on the on the radio station. If he does, I'll let you know. Um, and hopefully, you know, th th there'll be enough enough people aware. And um, this is my this is what I want to do. I want to make people aware. I want to make people alert and ready in case you get this big cover up again. And that, you know, and it's for the, for the another another time something strange happens. What often happens, right, is that some so-called philanthropist will agree to sponsor the project and this is what's this is what's gone wrong with the disclosure project right and the ufo disclosure because lawrence rockefeller is now involved now what will happen is people like that will get involved and suddenly they'll just mess everything up there's, there's many many ways and means of shutting down free energy and, and this happens with experiments into, into free energy of any kind and development projects and engineering projects and everything at every at every stage in the in the process something goes wrong uh, and not just cold fusion any kind of free energy any kind so we we got to watch out for it this time anyway um this is a tribute to martin fleischmann who died on august the 12th 2012 he's a brave man he stood up for his beliefs he tried to get the word out and they, they brought him down for it. Hope everyone else can show that kind of courage. So, um, rest in peace, Martin Fleischmann. Thanks for watching her Panwo TV. Hope you have a cup of tea too. Hospital Porters, Pride and Dignity, stop the New World Order.